Well, strain gauges have been used over the years in a variety of different types of biomedical applications for measurements of some of these forces. It could be forces from impact, it could be pressure, fluid pressures, uh, certainly the weight of the body and the balance of the body. Also, in some cases, we get into the cardiovascular system. There's a lot of different strain gauge type applications that have been used to monitor the human body. And what I'm going to do is just take one of the micro measurements, full bridge advanced sensor gauges. It's also mounted on a flex circuit and put it onto our little wood mannequin that would simulate the human body. These types of sensors can be used for a variety of different types of force feedback. If you look at it closely, you'll see that it's actually got four sensitive grids. So it's a complete Wheatstone bridge all contained in a very small package. And also to make the wiring easier, we got this flex circuit that's added to it where you basically would just very simply solder on four wires. So if you've got a biomedical application where you're trying to get a force feedback as a function of a load going through a, a part of the body, you might consider using these full bridge strain gauges with flex circuits because he can make the installation of that sensor quite simple and the measurement quite easy to accomplish. Things that we couldn't have done 20 years ago, we can do today with the electrical resistance strain gauge. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to degrease the part. And what I'm going to do is just place the gauge right on the back side of this little mannequin. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the micro measurements, isopropyl alcohol, we call it the GC6. I'll just take the cap off of it, take a gauze pad, put some into the gauze pad, and just wipe on the back side here. Whenever you start a strain gauge project, the first thing you want to do is degrease the area where you expect the strain gauge to be installed. And when you start testing non-metallic materials like composites and plastics, and wood in this case, isopropyl alcohol is commonly used for that because it's really good at degreasing and it's also not water-based. So the fact that it's a solvent, it'll evaporate quite quickly after uh, you're done using it. Now the next step is to do a light abrasion. And what I'm going to use is a piece of the silicon carbide paper. It's about two inches long and I'm just going to take it and fold it in half. And what I'm trying to do here is introduce a little bit of texture onto the back side of this little wooden mannequin. So I'll just sand it that direction. I'm going to take it and flip it over and kind of cross hatch. Go in the other direction. Again, all you're trying to do here is lift off any contamination. Make sure the surface is relatively smooth, but yet has some texture so the adhesive can bite to it. Now, once I've done that, I like to go ahead and clean one more time using the isopropyl alcohol. So I'm going to take another gauze pad and fold it. I put a little bit into the gauze and again use a couple of wipes off the back side. Wipe off the back side and just kind of clean any of the little dust particles off of it. Now at this point for something like this, you're just about ready to go ahead and install the gauge, but I'm going to do one last step and that's going to be a cleaning using the Imprep neutralizer. The Imprep neutralizer is an ammonia-based solution. Um, what that does, it helps to be a final cleaning step, and it also helps to make sure that the pH is at the right level uh, for the adhesive system. We're using the Embon 200, and the Embon 200 does not like an acetic surface, so we've got to make sure we bring the pH up and make sure it's at, the, at a neutral state for the, uh, the adhesive to want to bite onto the back side of this mannequin. So what I'm going to do is take the uh, neutralizer. I'm also going to find one of my cotton tip applicators. I'll put a little bit on it. Go ahead and put a few drops right here and just kind of take it and scrub it. And 
And for the most part, everything's coming up clean, so I'm not too worried about that. All right, and we'll let it sit there. Now at this point, since it is wood and we just used a water-based neutralizer, it'd be a good idea either to give it a couple of minutes or to take like a warm air blower, like a heat gun, and you could blow it across this and that would help to speed up the evaporation of the water. You either need to wait or you could plug in a heat gun, plug it in and uh, blow it across it. A heat gun that would look sort of like uh, this one. This is one of the master mite or master uh, heat guns that if you blow a little bit of warm air across it, you can see how quickly it starts to evaporate. That just speeds up the process. It's like an industrial strength hair dryer, although I don't know I recommend one of these for drying your hair. Yeah, just like that. All right, so once you've, once you've done that, we're basically ready to handle the strain gauge and get it prepped and ready. So I'm gonna take the little mannequin, slide him to the side out of the way, find the strain gauge. This is actually a, a demonstration sample of a full bridge. And what I'm gonna do is open up the package. I'm gonna reach inside and take the gauge out. Once I get the gauge removed, and what I'm gonna do is use my tweezers to handle it. I wanna show you what it looks like. So there's a really good view of this gauge. It's a full bridge, it's got four tabs. This is a balanced full bridge pattern, so it's gonna have very small electrical offsets. And what we're gonna focus on getting installed is gonna be this part of it. If you've never seen a strain gauge before, this is essentially the business end of the gauge. This is the part that does the transfer from surface strain to an electrical signal. The rest of this is just a flexible circuit to make it easier uh, could really to connect that into your electronics or instrumentation. Now, to get this bonded, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it onto a nice clean part of my piece of paper, and I'm gonna take a few drops of the Imprep neutralizer, and I'm gonna clean off the piece of glass that I'm gonna to use to prep and position that gauge. So I'm gonna take a couple of drops of the neutralizer and just take a gauze pad and wipe that back and forth, just like so. And then I'm gonna take the gauge, I'm gonna pick it up. And once I get it up, I'm gonna lay it onto the piece of glass just like that. And then I'm gonna take a piece of the gauge installation tape. So I'm gonna find the Micromeasurements gauge installation tape, the PCT series. I'm gonna tear off about an inch piece of it, maybe two inches and throw that away because sometimes it picks up a little bit of dust. And then I'm gonna take another piece that's about four inches long. And what I like to do is take it and kind of fold the ends over. Some folks call these buddy tabs. I'm gonna make some little buddy tabs on the end. And then I'm gonna take this, lay it right over top of the strain gauge, press it down over top of it, and then I'm gonna lift it up at a shallow angle. And see, what this allows me to do is to handle the gauge and pick it up and move it without ever having to touch it. So I'm gonna pull my little mannequin back over, put him in the field of view so that you can see him. And we're gonna target installing this gauge right in the center. Now, with installing strain gauges like this, one of the things that you do is you use the tape to help reposition the gauge because what you have to do is lift the tape 
exposing the bonding side of the gauge and potentially the flex circuit as well so that you can apply the adhesive and then pull it back over and bond it. So once I'm happy with the position of the gauge, I've got it right about the center of the back. I'm going to lift the tape. Once I get past the gauge, I'll peel it back just a little bit more like that. And now we're ready to apply the adhesive. And we're going to use the Embond 200. It comes with a catalyst and the adhesive. And we're going to use the catalyst first. And what I'm going to do is take the catalyst, open it up, and I'm going to touch it on the inside part of the bottle about eight to ten times. I want to put the vast majority of the catalyst right back into the bottle. I know it's kind of hard for you to see that. But then I'll take it, and if you watch, I'll just use a single wipe along the back side of the gauge. Make sure that whole strain gauge gets wet with the catalyst. I'll put the brush cap back in it, tighten it down, and now you need to give it a full 60 seconds. So now you're going to wait. So right now what we're waiting on is in that catalyst, about 98% of it is isopropyl alcohol, and we've got to give that time to evaporate. The 2% is what we want to leave behind to help control the rate of the cyanoacrylate reaction. We're using Embond 200 to glue this gauge down, which is great for building prototypes. It's great for stress analysis. There's a wide variety of uh, strain gauge applications where Embond 200 makes a lot of sense. If you're building a long-term transducer, you're probably better off using a two-part epoxy-based adhesive system. You know, if you're building a biomedical device that's going to get implanted, you're probably better off using a two-part epoxy system such as our Embond AE10 or possibly the Embond 600 or Embond 610. And all of those, you can find details of them on our website at www.micro-measurements.com. But I've waited my full uh, 60 seconds. So what I'm going to do, since this is a limited amount of room, I'm going to apply the adhesive right at the junction of the tape and the mannequin. Put a little bit extra, more than I probably normally would. Take it, pull it over like this, and kind of wipe it up underneath. And then I'm going to take my thumb and put it over top of the whole thing. And now I'm going to keep it on there for a full 60 seconds. So again, another 60 seconds. That's the great thing about using this adhesive system is a cure of it is only thumb pressure and you let it sit for 60 seconds. So basically you got to get comfortable. That can be hard to do if you're reaching up overhead or you're laying on your back or something like that, like up underneath a vehicle. But you do need to give it a full 60 seconds, so you want to time yourself. So get a watch, get a timer, get a friend, whatever you need in order to be able to time it. And I'm waiting a full 60 seconds before I take my finger off. And that's true for all of our adhesive systems. When you look at their cure requirements, their cure requirements are with pressure. So sometimes we'll get that question, you know, can I take the clamp off midway through the cure? And the answer is no. You need to leave the pressure applied during the entire cure cycle. So I think for me now I've gone my one minute. Now with Embond 200, what we like to do is let it, let it go for a minute under thumb pressure and then we let it sit for two additional minutes, and then we're ready to take the tape off. So Embond 200, I would use it if you're considering building some prototypes, uh, if you're looking at some short-term room temperature measurements. And like I said, if you're going to build a more long-term transducer that maybe you actually embed, uh, maybe in an animal or in a, you know, some other type of application where you need it to last longer term, then I'd use a two-part epoxy for that. Okay, so we waited our two minutes, and now we're going to take the tape off of the strain gauge. So what, what I want you to try to do if you're doing this is peel it directly back on itself. In this case, we got part of the flex circuit, so we got to be a little extra careful with that. So I'm going to bring it off to this side. And once we kind of get off the gauge, 
go and peel the rest of the tape off. Again, notice how I'm trying to peel it directly back, trying to minimize force pulling on the top of it. And there's the installed strain gauge. A little bit of white that you see there is uh, a little bit of excess adhesive that flowed out onto the top. That's, that's not too uncommon. The, uh, especially if you have any humidity, you'll see sometimes it'll turn uh, slightly white, just like it did right there, but that's a little extra adhesive that's gotten on the top. But this is our strain gauge installation with a full bridge gauge on this little wooden mannequin. And it's really up to you now to think about, well, how could I use this in a real world application? You know, what kind of applications do I have where I could use a load sensing device to provide an output? And the more we see artificial intelligence become commonplace, I think the greater range of applications we'll see for using strain gauges to provide that force and load feedback. Thank you.